Yeah, thank you for joining DNOC 10 and thank you for joining the talk about OpenSense, the open firewall for a data center. And I will promise to keep within the next 10 minutes. First of all, a question to you. Have you already tested an open source firewall? Hands up. Oh, great, great. Has anybody not tested an open source firewall yet? Two, three, okay, that's, that's fine, that's fine. So, next question. If yes, so which firewall have you tested? IP Fire, hands up. Okay, three or four or five people. Okay, Monowall. Okay, about 10 people. PF Sense. Okay, that's about, I would say, 95%. Okay, and Open Sense. Okay, that's about 20%. So, good starting point here. Um, and I'll see also you're all awake still, that's good. So, there's currently a questionnaire going on on Twitter about that. And as we can see, uh, PF Sense, Open Sense, you're really in good shape here when it comes down to the usage point here. And I'll do my best to raise up the 27% of Open Sense here. So, for the next, I think, nine or eight minutes. Yeah, hint, feel free to vote two after the talk. Um, I have quite an agenda, but I'll go quick and directly through it about the history, about FreeBSD stuff, uh, configuration, and some features of OpenSense, WAN failover, high availability plugins, and then a very interesting question, should I switch from PFSense to something else or not? Yeah, that will be, in the end, the question. So, OpenSense, what is OpenSense? It's been started as a fork of PFSense, which itself has started as a fork of Monowall. So, nearly uh, same history here. As you can see, Monowall isn't in business anymore. They stopped the project in 2015, and one of the project leaders, Michael Kaspar, encourages other users to check out PFSense or OpenSense, so we are in good company here. When it comes down to feature comparison, um, yeah, you can really see that the features between PFSense and OpenSense are very much the same. So you have nearly the same feature set, but some interesting uh, different points in there, which I would like to line out here. You can see that when it comes down to the license, OpenSense has a very uh, open BSD Clause 2 license, so you can do nearly anything you want to do with it. You have an other IPS system, so for intrusion prevention, you have Suricata in there, not Snort. And yeah, um, for the two-factor authentication, that's also native integrated. So you can see roughly the same feature set. One important differentiation is also that the um, GUI of the OpenSense system is, yeah, has been developed from ground up new, and by now about 95% of the code has been rewritten. So although the features are very much the same under the hood, it's really uh, different by now. And to get a feeling, the project is useful today also in a production environment because it's therefore about five, uh, four to five years by now when you count on the development time too. So it's been out there in the wild for some time by now. I think I can go over the next uh, slides. FreeBSD, Harden BSD, who doesn't know FreeBSD? Okay, good. Um, Harden BSD, who doesn't know Harden BSD? Okay, five seconds, uh, go quick uh, over it. Harden BSD is a fork of FreeBSD with some security extensions in there um, that should make it harder to use buffer overflows, so security enhancements in there. Now to the interesting point for the configuration of the firewall. What are the most important steps to do when you take an OpenSense system? First step, as for most firewalls, default settings are that LAN to WAN is all allowed. So you should do something about it there. The first step is you can easily integrate IP lists like Firehall or Spamhouse, add just an alias in there. And yeah, when you configure the alias, as we've seen here, just another rule that um, you prevent your users to access malicious IPs out there in the wild. So that's a good starting point there. 
Next point would be to prepare for intrusion prevention, um, not only detection, and, but also prevention. And for this stuff, you have to disable all the hardware offloading of your network interface there. Reason is that otherwise you don't have the possibility to look into the packet there. So for that, it is necessary to disable it, although this has a drawback when it comes down uh, to performance. It ensures that Suricata can really do a real inline and online uh, prevention in there. So when you compare it to PFSense on at th that point when the IPS system detects uh, malicious packets, for PFSense not detects it, then the firewall creates a rule, but some packets may go through it before the rule has been activated. With Suricata, it's really online, so no single packet goes through it there. Yeah, activate it, um, and yeah, you can enable some rule sets, download them, drop them, and yeah, get blacklists for SSL, for example. So to keep in time, I'll show the fifth step. Uh, when you want to use a proxy, also just enable the proxy, enable um, transparent proxy, and then you have the advantage to integrate lists for um, URLs, as we have seen also in the beginning for IP addresses in there. So I've seen we have about four minutes left, so I'll go right through it for the WAN failover. Uh, another nice feature in there, also easy to configure, just add multiple uh, default gateways with multiple links, and then configure um, the other state when the backup link should get active. For example, when you have the member down, packet loss, high latency, or a combination of packet loss and high latency. And yeah, you are fine in there. As we can see in this example, uh, one uplink went down. This is offline, the other one gets online. So easy to configure and reliable to use there. So when it comes to high availability, um, you can take the advantage of FreeBSD HA clustering capabilities. You can use CARP, the Common Address Redundancy Protocol, together with PF Sync to have your firewall rules in sync and XML RPC Sync for the synchronization of the configuration. A tip here is start configuring the firewall when you put a new system uh, into production and then configure the firewall afterwards. In your I'm really sure that you have the configuration synced in the best possible way. This is the way to do it here. Yeah, when it comes to plugins, this is a really nice feature also of OpenSense. Uh, reason being is that uh, the plugin architecture is very modular. So, for example, when you have a setup with a proxy server and you want to do uh, wire scanning for it, you install uh, the plugin for Klamathal, for example, and the ICAP server. And I think we should see us here. Yeah, can, to uh, analyze the, the traffic there. And you want to use, for example, also uh, antivirus features for mail stuff. Um, then you don't need to install uh, virus engines twice. You have the Klamathal plugin, and you can there you can see it in the middle in there, the antivirus engine, and you could use this plugin for both um, the proxy and also the um, mail stuff. So really modular design and also very open. Feel free to add your plugin on there. There are lots of plugins developed uh, out there in the wild, also from other users, so a very open project. Another good question, um, why should you think about going from PFSense to OpenSense? As we've seen, the interface is very nice. Um, bad thing is that you can't take the configuration and use it. You have to configure it from new up because code is not the same anymore. Uh, but one thing is that the uh, community is very open. Uh, and also when you look into some discussions, do maybe a search for uh, WIPO and OpenSense. And for those of you who are familiar with it, you see that um, there's also been some discussions in the community. There's been yeah, some website which was not so nice talking about OpenSense and 
yeah, you can look it into it afterwards. So time is running out. Questions, no time. So if you want to, you to, to test it with a tumbler and thank you. <laughs>